Good evening. I would ask you to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, as well as our Star Spangled Banner. This evening, the Vice President of the Class of 2022, Will Wittesley, will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Robin Hunter from the Dover Select Board will offer greetings to the class of 2022. Ms. Hunter. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As I was preparing my remarks for this evening, it occurred to me that 10 years ago today, my son Sam graduated from DS. I started getting a bit nostalgic and decided what I would do is share with you just a few of the things that I've learned in the 10 years since his graduation. So first of all, to the educators and administration of Dover Sherborne, you guys truly are the secret sauce. Year in and year out, you prepare our kids to be successful in their future endeavors. Thank you very much for your devotion and striving for academic excellence, your commitment to the community, and the inclusiveness in the DS culture. To, your, to the parents out there, boy, could I share a lot with you, but I'm only going to leave you with two of what I think are some of the important things I've learned. Uh, first of all, you can stop worrying now. These young men and women on either side of me are really resourceful. They are truly capable of what they will face in the coming years. Another thing I learned, and it was one thing that I hate to admit, is that my husband was right about one thing, that 
not receiving an immediate response to a text message or not hearing from my son the first couple of months that he was away was not a need to call up the National Guard. He was really okay, doing well, and he was simply busy. To all you students out there, all I have to say is who you are today is not who you will be in the future. Embrace all that's new. Don't let the fear of failure stop you from finding what you're truly passionate about. Congratulations to all of you, and I look forward to seeing what happens to you in the future. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. It is now my pleasure to welcome Mr. George Morrill, representing the Sherborne Select Board, who will offer greetings to the class of 2022. Mr. Morrill. Good evening. I'm George Morrill, a member of the Sherburne Select Board, and here on behalf of the town of Sherburne to, to say congratulations to the class of 2022 of Dover Sherburne High School. I know you all worked very hard to get here and are looking forward to the next step. We're all very proud of you and excited to see you shine. Next, I'd like to thank the school committees, the administration, the teachers, and everybody in the Dover Sherburne school system. Dover Sherburne is an elite school which is due in large part to your leadership, guidance, and skills in the classroom. Last and certainly not least, I want to say thank you and congratulations to the parents of the graduates. I know it's been a long, sometimes fun, and sometimes stressful journey to get here. I especially want to thank those parents that not only have raised some impressive graduates while working full-time jobs, but also volunteer on many of our town's boards and committees. You're not only doing a wonderful job getting your children here, but also keeping our towns running, so thank you. So again, on behalf of the town of Sherburne, we congratulate the Down Dover Sherburne class of 2022. Go out there and show them what it means to be from these wonderful towns. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morrill. At this time, we will have a music selection from Noteworthy.
I would now ask the president of the class of 2022, Ms. Liza Birmingham, to please come forward to offer welcoming remarks. Ms. Birmingham. Are you done or are you finished? Growing up, I was asked this question after many tasks. While you might think being done and being finished are synonymous, I can assure you there's a pretty significant distinction. Being done is a decision. Being finished is to achieve completion. For, for example, when I'm done, let's say vacuuming, I might leave the vacuum on the floor with the cord racing across the room. My mom would then scan the floor to find, yes, it's clean, but the vacuum should be returned to the closet where it belongs. This is when she would ask, are you done or are you finished? And feeling defeated by this relentless inquiry, I would neatly put away the vacuum. This question echoes in my mind as I pursue every project and assignment reminding me to create a completed product I can be proud of. Dover Sherburn has also perpetuated this idea of excellence by encouraging us to bring our very best to every aspect of our lives. This unique culture here at DS has made it a truly remarkable place to receive our education. This academic excellence is reflected in the rankings, scores, and amazing accolades of Dover Sherburn students. These accomplishments should be recognized, but they are not what make us great. Our academic and athletic achievements frontline newspapers and forge our reputation, but I am far more proud of the people we have all become. The resilience, compassion, kindness, loyalty, courage, and love that we all share is what truly binds us together. Everyone here has touched each other's lives in some way. It's the unsuspecting friend that lifted you up in the most difficult times. It's the art teacher who lets the non-art students flood their classrooms on a daily basis. It's the coaches who craft personal heartfelt letters to each of their players. It's that random classmate who found you crying in the bathroom. It's the teammate who makes you feel invincible on and off the field. It's the boy you sat next to in your e-block math class. There is no metric on any standardized test or ranking to measure or quantify the sense of community we've built here at DS. Today, we celebrate this. In order to properly recognize my fellow graduates, we must recognize the thousands of people whose efforts, big and small, have amounted to all of us being here today. I would like to thank the teachers, administrators, and faculty for teaching us not only how to be good students, but good people. I would like to thank the parents and family members for encouraging, motivating, comforting, and pushing us. I would like to thank the bus drivers, guidance counselors, custodial staff, and police officers for working tirelessly to keep us safe and supported. I would like to thank our class advisors, my fellow class officers, and the entire student council. I would like to thank my classmates for electing me it's meant more to me than you will ever know. And as I look out at all of you here today, I see a group of extraordinary young adults raised in a place that binds us by experiences native to only Dover Sherburn High School. Like electing to spend our free time wasting gas in the parking lots of our local abandoned hospital, or vandalizing our friends' cars with window paint that would eventually need to be scrubbed off before the first day of our senior year, or being undefeated in the annual poster decorating contest though we never took home the trophy for the overall spirit competition. And while some might struggle to leave this all behind, 
and others may see it as something they have merely outgrown. It will forever be the home we were raised in by the people we can always return to. I know that Dover Sherburn has armed us with the necessary tools to achieve our dreams and reach excellence in whatever we wish to pursue. It amazes me that this sea of blue caps and gowns was once the class infamously named the most poorly behaved class to ever embark on the eighth grade DC field trip. <laughs> because today, I see the future activists fighting for much needed social change. Doctors and scientists pioneering life-saving cures. Artists bringing joy and beauty into the world. Performers who can inspire and captivate their audience. Writers telling the untold stories. And overall, an unwavering potential for greatness that Dover Sherburn has instilled in each and every one of us. As we celebrate and lament the end of high school, for the first time, that dreaded question, are you done or are you finished, has provided me some comfort. I'm elated to remind you all that though we are done with high school here at Dover Sherburn, thanks to all it has taught us, our lifelong friendships and our very bright futures, we are far from finished. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. We will now have a musical selection by our other a cappella group, DS Alcoda. Take that jump, and don't fear the fall. Hope when the water rises, you build a wall. I hope when the crowd turns out, you're screaming your name. Hope with everybody runs, you choose to stay. I hope that you fall in love and it hurts so bad. The only way you can know, you give it all you have. And I hope that you don't suffer, but take the pain. Hope when the moment comes, you'll say, I, I did it all. Spend your days, they all add up. And when the sun goes down, if you raise your cup. I wish that I could witness all your joy and all your pain. But until that moment comes, I'll say, I did it all.
This year, we are proud to say we have two declamation finalists, two outstanding students. Our first speaker today is Amal Sharfi. Hello everyone, good evening, and congratulations to each and every single one of you. I'd first like to start off by thanking those who have made this ceremony possible tonight. Superintendent Smith, Superintendent-elect McCoy, the members of the Dover and Sherburn Select Boards and the Regional School Committee, Mr. Smith and Ms. Keegan. Thank you all, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to speak tonight. Those of you who know me probably know that I'm very much a STEM-oriented person, but what I'm about to say next definitely doesn't help that case. Math department, you may want to cover your ears for this one, because today I'd like to highlight why DS has taught me that one plus one equals one. Bold statement, I know, but Mr. Bridger, before you disown me as your math student, just hear me out. Up until 2015, we had all been confined to the parameters of our elementary schools. For many of us, that meant Chickering or Pine Hill, but regardless, we all walked onto this campus for the first time carrying our own unique backgrounds. It wasn't until that very intimidating first day of sixth grade that we went from whatever town, Boston, Dover, or Sherburn, to Dover, Sherburn our several communities seamlessly united into a singular student body that has supported and cared for each other ever since it was formed and all the way throughout high school. In fact, it was the start of high school that all of a sudden, our lives seemed to become this one relentless mission to prove ourselves, to prove ourselves worthy of a future that was four years ahead. We became dedicated to answering the one vital question for this future. Who are you? Who are you academically, athletically, socially? From as early as freshman year, we were expected to somehow quantify and categorize ourselves, when in reality, our identities were only beginning to be formed. We were high school students striving to answer a question that most adults don't even know about themselves. And this multifaceted drive to answer, who are you, often made it easy to overlook the question, how are you? But that is exactly where my far-fetched algebraic equation comes in. 1 plus 1 equals 165 equals 1. Because take a look around at one another. The 165 graduates sitting here today are the very people that made our high school careers feel less like a career and more like one life that we were all living together. And while our major milestones, the first days of school, our sports games, prom, may stick out as the most integral components of high school, I'd argue the importance of those just passing by moments in really defining DS. That is, the daily candid moments that someone would see if they just happened to be taking a walk through our school. They would see floods of students in the lobbies during break, eager to support fundraisers that we are passionate about, such as our recent bake sale for Ukraine. They would see Mr. Smith sitting on the benches and laughing with the students, never without a smile on his face. They would see the guidance room, always having an open door and somehow an endless supply of fidgets. And they would certainly see us as seniors in our bright purple shirts, wondering where exactly these, fast, these past four years have gone. Ironically, it's when we place value on these just passing by moments that we actually stop letting life pass us by. Because as impossible as it may seem, the moment we all leave here today, we will no longer be seniors at Dover Sherburn High School. Many, if not all of us, will be overwhelmed, nervous, excited, and lost. As if somehow we are betraying these past four years, 
like we worked so incredibly hard to climb this ladder of high school all the way to the top as seniors, only to become freshmen all over again next year. But something I've learned from running around this track for the past four years on the school's track and field team is that no matter how many laps you take, you will always end up right back where you started. And that isn't a bad thing, it's great. It means that we aren't running away from our Dover Sherman experience. We're running around it. Now, during a track race, everyone lines up and runs in the same direction towards the same finish, but that's not what high school is like. We were all scattered around, running at our own pace, each with a unique direction. But despite our different paths through high school, we were all led back here to this moment about to cross that finish line together. And in those moments you feel lost, simply look around because you will circle back to your past selves who are ready and waiting for you to learn from them. Your kindergarten self who in 2009 walked onto a school bus for the very first time. Your sixth grade self who made friends with brand new people from a neighboring city and town that may have well been completely different worlds. Your pandemic self that quickly learned to identify a smile that's hidden under masks. And your freshman yourself who could only imagine this very moment. I mean, back then our school didn't even have working Wi-Fi. Oh wait, it still doesn't. <laughs> After today, we may no longer be at DS, but DS will be within us. Today, we are here as one, one school, one community, and one very deserving group of graduates. Congratulations, everybody. Our second distinguished declamation speaker is Ms. Kai Abbott. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank Interim Superintendent Smith, Superintendent-Elect McCoy, members of the Dover and Sherburne Select Boards, members of the Regional School Committee, Principal Smith, and Assistant Principal Keegan for your commitment to our education and for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you to Kelly Manise and my mom for helping me write this speech. A final thank you to my family and my friends, Laurel, Zoe, and Courtney, for all your support and for giving me the strength to be up here tonight. First, I would like to share an important lesson I learned in the last four years of high school and something my grandpa Tom used to say to me when I was younger. He would tell me, life isn't fair, kiddo, so get used to it. As a little kid, I thought, what the heck kind of advice is that, old man? Where was the follow your dreams, kid, or the never give up that I was hoping and expecting to hear? But now, as a senior, in the class of 2022, I say, you were right, Grandpa. Life isn't fair. Our class has not had the traditional high school experience. You know, the one we all watched a thousand times in High School Musical. I never got a hot basketball boyfriend like Troy Bolton. <laughs> Calculus was not as easy as Gabriella made it seem. And there certainly wasn't a grand finale of us singing, we're all in this together while dancing through the hallways. As it turns out though, we were in it together, but not in a singing and dancing way. Rather, alongside one another, we experienced many life altering events. 
We were isolated by a pandemic, forcing us into online schooling and masks. We watched the murder of George Floyd and many others. We witnessed the increasing pace of global warming destroy our environment. We stood by helplessly as war crimes were committed in Ukraine, and then, in the cruelest blow of all, we lost our dear friend. Owen Bingham. Life, you are not fair indeed. In the wake of so much turmoil and tragedy, we could have given up, but we didn't. Instead, we watched sunsets at Medfield State Park, socially distanced. We learned to discreetly eat and text while on Zoom. Although I think the teachers can attest that we weren't as good at that one as we thought we were. <laughs> we stood up for what we believed in through protest and advocacy. We created art. We learned to drive. We started businesses. We became Bell, The Beast, Lumiere, Cogsworth, Gaston, and Mrs. Potts, and got standing ovations. We built rockets, we wrote sonnets, and we applied and got into colleges around the world. The boys won their seventh lacrosse state championship. The girls won their first ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we brought home a state championship for golf. We skied, we swam, we shot hoops, we skated. We brought the fan zone back to life, and we let everyone know that school spirit is cool and that loving the Raiders is mandatory. Let's face it, class of 2022, we did a lot. And perhaps our greatest accomplishment was that when, when faced with unimaginable pain, we cared for one another in the most profound ways. We showed strength. We showed resilience, and we showed compassion. As we go forward into the next stage of our lives, let us carry this strength, this resilience, and this compassion with us. It is easy to be bewitched by the idea of growing up, wishing for better days ahead, missing out on what is in front of us. I couldn't wait to finally be a high school student. I couldn't wait to turn 16 and be able to drive. I couldn't wait to graduate and go to college. And now, as I stand before you, I wish I had savored each moment a little more. Kindergarten me should have taken advantage of how simple making friends was. Third grade me should have appreciated recess more. Seventh grade me should have enjoyed the amount of free time I had. All these should haves. But the reality is that we only control the nows. After watching elementary, middle, and high school fly by, I've begun to see the importance of slowing down, taking that breath, and appreciating what's around me. As we get swept into the chaos of adulthood and try to find the best college, for the best job, remember to not just get through the days, but to live them. Our beloved classmate, Owen, embraced this approach to life and truly lived each day to its fullest. It was well known among some of our classmates that he planned to deliver a speech tonight. While we all know declamation is a competitive process and that you actually have to audition and be selected that didn't deter Owen. He just knew that he had to give a speech and he had much to teach us. Mostly, Owen did this by example, how he lived his life and through his actions. I wanna share with you some things that I learned from Owen that I hope you will carry into the next chapter of your lives as you try to live each day fully. First and foremost, 
when you're at the gym, do that extra rep. Take pictures and videos. Give your friends nicknames. Wear friendship bracelets. Text and call people often to let them know how much you appreciate them. Help your parents and be there for your siblings. Always look for ways to spread kindness and positivity. Flex all the time. Sing your heart out to your favorite songs with your friends and dance like everyone is watching you. Put effort into your relationships. Never lay up. Golf people should get that one. When you catch that fly ball at a baseball game, give it to the excited little kid sitting in front of you. Describe every night with friends as the best night of your life. Say hi to everyone. Be that role model that people look up to and want to be like. And when in doubt on what to do next, just flex some more. As you go forth into the next chapter of your life, bring these life lessons with you. The world will be a better place if you do. I have known many of you since kindergarten, some even since preschool. A world without all of us together seems strange because it is all any of us have ever known. We have shaped each other into the people we are today. As we prepare to leave, we are forever connected by our shared history and all that we've gone through together. And so class of 2022, while we learned firsthand my grandpa Tom's harsh lesson that life isn't fair, don't let that define you. Be the strength, be the resilience, and be the compassion we shared with one another these past four years, and especially these past few months. And most importantly, become the best version of yourself that you can be. And as you do, know that Owen will be in the fan zone cheering you on. We will now have a music selection for members of the DES Regional Chorus.
The Lonergan Award. Each year, a senior female and male are chosen by the administration to receive the Lonergan Award. This award, which is sponsored by the Dover Shoreborn PTO, is presented in honor of former high school headmaster Denise Lonergan, who served the Dover Shoreborn community for 33 years, with 13 years as the headmaster of this high school. Recipients of this prestigious award are active in the school community. They are in good academic standing, and they possess the following qualities. Altruism, character, diligence, integrity, and loyalty. I would now ask the following two students to come forward to receive this important recognition. William Beckin Shuddy and Emily Hannah Waugh. Hello, DS families, community leaders, faculty, and students. My name is John Smith, and I am the proud principal of this high school. I want to take a moment to thank a number of people who have worked so hard to make today's ceremony possible. Our administrative assistants, Kathleen White and Tracy D. Flaminio, our head custodian, Dean Bogan, head custodian at the middle school, Dave Bonavere, director of facilities, Sean McGee, Head of Grounds, Chris Hendricks, and all of our custodians and ground staff. I'd also like to thank Mr. Elliot Lucille, wellness educator, for all of his coordination and efforts to make today happen. It is my pleasure to speak to you on behalf of the faculty and staff to the graduates of the class of 2022. These seniors have met and often surpassed the expectations of a rigorous school system and they found success in various aspects of life in our high school. These seniors deserve our profound gratitude in what has been yet another challenging school year. We first returned to regular in-school days this fall. However, we still had to be mindful of a continuing ec epidemic that crisscrossed our world several times over. We were together, however, and that what was most important. While we endured continued basking and contact tracing, we also saw a full return to in-class labs, field trips, assemblies, athletic tournaments, highly successful athletic teams, as well as in-person drama performances which sold out audiences in Mudge Auditorium. Then in February, we lost one of our very own. Owen Bingham. Owen, we miss you terribly, but we know that you are here in spirit, and I can still hear you saying right now, let's go Raiders. Owen united us as one. As the spring rolled on, we are finally able to see so many of our students' faces. The class of 2022, you have been resilient and steadfast in your commitment to the finish line. While next year will bring various experiences to the class, tonight you are once again united. You are graduates of an excellent school system with talented and dedicated educators, incredibly supportive parents, and a community that so values education. Class of 2022, as you know all too well, our world has its challenges. Continue to have hope, courage, and be an agent to do good in this world. My parting advice for you is this. Whatever you choose to do in life, be kind, 
be hardworking, and be an advocate for all human beings. It has been my honor to serve as your principal. I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you and your families, and I wish you nothing but continued success, good health, and happiness. Superintendent Smith, I ask that you now accept the class of 2022. They have met the high rigorous academic standards as set forth by the school committee in the communities we represent. It is now my pleasure to introduce the superintendent of schools, Ms. Kathleen Smith. Good evening. And before I begin, you can imagine I have seen my share of high school graduations. And I have to tell you standing here, after listening to your student speakers, this is really tough acts to follow. I would like to thank the Regional School Committee, Superintendent-Elect Elizabeth McCoy, Principal John Smith, Assistant Principal Ann Dever Keegan, and our administrators, teachers, and staff who are here today to offer their well wishes and honor the accomplishments of our seniors graduating tonight. It has been my honor to serve this district alongside the leadership of Principal Smith and Assistant Principal Dever Keegan and their high school team who have been there to support you during times of great achievement and during times of great sorrow. Your compassion, dedication, and caring for these graduates and their families is notable and respected. I would also like to extend a heartfelt thank you to you, the parents, grandparents, caregivers, family, friends, and the Dover Sherburne community that has supported our graduates and fostered a love of learning through their entire educational journey. This day is for all of you as well, and I hope you take a moment to recognize the unwavering commitment and sacrifices you made along the way. Your contributions uh, towards our graduates will benefit the world for years to come. As your interim superintendent, I've had a unique opportunity to observe and absorb everything the school district has to offer. During my short time here, I have been continually impressed with the Dover Sherbrooke community, and any family would be wise to put down roots here. At the core of this community are its schools, school staff, students, and families. This is a district that works together and values educational excellence. I know when these graduates move on to their next chapter, they'll bring with them distinct pride that only comes from being a DS Raider. To the class of 2022, first and foremost, congratulations. You are a strong, compassionate, talented group of young adults willing to go that extra mile to succeed at the highest levels in all you set out to accomplish. We've learned a lot this year. And as we come together to honor the accomplishments of our graduates, we are met with a renewed sense of optimism and a fresh perspective. New beginnings have never meant more than they do now. Although this day marks the last day of your journey with the Dover Sherburn Schools, it's truly the first day of the rest of your lives. As you start your next chapter, you'll see firsthand that today's world is beyond a doubt complicated. We are living in a complex and diverse society. Though advanced through advancements in technology, we are constantly exposed to new information, and we are able to communicate and connect instantly to the world all around us. This comes with its conveniences and its challenges, which you've certainly proved you can handle during these past few years. Today's graduating class is filled with leaders capable of logical thinking and making positive changes. When the world struggled to find common ground, these students forged partnerships and marched forward together. They listened to one another, displayed compassion, and advocated for social justice and equity. They were innovative, collaborative, and nothing short of inspiring. As your graduation celebrations commence, I want each to know that I wholeheartedly trust your generation to be our pioneers of the future. I believe you have the determination, 
the grit and the skills that are needed to have a lasting impact for generations to come. As we're faced with challenges related to our economy, healthcare system, and environment, you will be our surgeons, our scientists, our astronauts, the pre preparing our world for its next voyage. You've demonstrated you're able to make choices that are inclusive of all communities, to have collegial conversations with one another, and to move ideas and innovations into the future. The Dover Sherbrooke community you see around you tonight will be with you every step of the way. With their support, I believe, the generation here today can and will change the world. In the famous words of John F. Kennedy, if not us, who? If not now, when? As you walk across the stage tonight, ask yourself, if not me, who? And if not now, when? Now is your time to rise to the occasion, to lead our communities into a place of sustainability, prosperity, and positivity. We are with you today and always, and we can't wait to see what you accomplish. Good luck to the class of 2022. Thank you. At this time, I would ask Ms. Kate Potter, Chair of the Regional School Committee, Ms. Maggie Sharon, member of the Regional School Committee, and other school officials to please come forward as members of each guidance department member reads the names of each of the class of 2022. Elizabeth Ann Birmingham. <laughs> William Weaver Whittlesey. <laughs> Cecilia Catherine Fielding. Charlotte Ann Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> Kai Helen Abbott. Henry Lawrence Murphy, the fourth. <laughs> Rachel Julia Wendell. Luke Patton Loeffler. <laughs> Sophia Lane Tate. <laughs> Amul Mahmoud Sharif. Sharfri. Sharfri. Christina Carmela Augustino. <laughs> Re
Rhea Bahather. Benjamin Banerjee. Calden Hansen Bates. Audrey Ann Bauman. Samuel Flynn Bauman. Ava Elizabeth Beninati. John Daniel Bennett. Owen Patrick Bingham. William Bischoff Bowen. <laughs> Curtis Mark Bowman. <laughs> Natalie Nicole Braithwaite. Caroline Therese Brown. Jane Eleanor Caffrey. Arden May Caldecott. Ava Marie Carboni. John Patrick Casey. Catherine Lydia Cashman. Matthew Richard Sharon. <laughs> Kelsey Elizabeth Chu. Mia Elizabeth Clark.
James Augustus Collins. Nicole Jack Jacqueline Cormier. Bethany Uma Carell. Sam Benjamin Carell. Ryan Matthew Coyle. Abigail Elizabeth Crane. <laughs> Levi Neil Cushing. Derek James Daly. Abby Rose DeSavo. <laughs> Emily Alice Drum. Lily Duplessis. Jenna Rose Eiten. Theoni Marilyn Christellis Etheridge. Corinne Cynthia Foreman. Isabella Bo Friedel. <laughs> Lily Lee Fryer. <laughs> Tong Cecilia Fu. George Sawyer Garrett. <laughs> Benjamin Hotung Gainer. <laughs> Leo William Gnan. Gordon Henry Goldberger. Sarah Vo Goldstein. Emma Shea Gonsalves. Alexander Daniel Goodness. Peter Mercier Green. Cole Sabin Hadar. Amelia Hunt Haggerty. <laughs> Ella.
Ella Louise Hain. Isabella Joan Heredia. Rachel Ada Herman. Sarah Mitchell Hirschberg. Aiden James Hirsch. Catherine Volpe Hogan. Ifosa David Amade. Andre David Ismail Zaid. Imani Viva Gianti. Ryan William Kane. Alexander David Capillion. Connor James Keating. Lauren McKinnon Kelly. Nikolai Ivan Klistoff. Jacqueline Victoria Keel. Pierre Matthias Edward Emile Cole. Halden Wayne Coons. Luke Dietrich Latterman. Jeremy Adam Lawrence. Mia Louise Levine. Seagal Ann Levine. Maya Lockhart Craner. Ethan Patrick Lynch. Alan Ma. Nicole Lindyway Makakathy. Courtney Ann Mahoney. Laurel Ann Mahoney. Jacob Richard Manjarati.
Nicole Caroline Mayer. Mercy Lucenda McGee. Riley Teresa McLaughlin. Avery Beatrice Henderson McStravick. Mateo Montemayor. Austin Dennis Morris. Asa Nadenla. Dylan Christopher Natal. Sophia Mary Natal. Vin Long Fu Mien. Christopher Matthew Nermal. Charles Douglas Niskanen. Hazel Elise Nystrom. Reese Ann O'Connell. Brendan Lewis O'Neill. Chelsea Ayabaya Ohani Otto. Leo William Olmstead. Robert Bradford Ozerdem. Diana Isabel Pena. Martina Perez Verzini. Rebecca Maria Aurora Perrine. Charles Theodore Perry. Caden Jacob Popeil. John McNabb Potter. Leo Stone Pucci. Nathan Charles Randa. Samuel William Randa. Mason James Rausch. Caroline Ann Regan. Catherine Fiona Ritzer. Trinity Jenks Robbins.
Derek Thomas Roman. Marcus William Roman. Lauren Elizabeth Root. Olivia Rose. Marisol Sainz. Dylan Matthew Salvin. Thomas David Scannell. Michelangelo Frederick Bordy Schroeder. Katrina Elise Schultz. William Beckin Shuddy. Zoe Ann Schwarz. Disha Padmini Settler. Thomas Francis Shea. Brendan Michael Soboleski. Eleanor Bever Saska. Zachary Robert Spellman. Eva Sophia Ufre Swadipong. Zachary Donald Zito. Cadence Jun Keat Tai. Isabel Eva Jane Taylor. Cameron Richard Thompson. Samuel Rupert Thompson. Edward Jackson Tortolot. Remy Layla Treston. Julia Rose Van Rijn. Indivar Augustus Wall. Emily Hannah Waugh.
George Ashton Webb. Zachary Samuel Weitzman. Stephanie Paige Wellman. Claire Victoria Whitaker. Rachel Elizabeth Weiss. Sterling Alexander Williams. Francis Seaver Wilson. Kira Ann Wilson. Jonathan James Shu. Jack Dairu Shrew. Ava Elizabeth Yablonski. Irene Chen Yang. Finn Walter Zatilny. At this time, I would ask the class president to come up one last time for the traditional moving of the tassel, Ms. Liza Birmingham. I now present to you the class of 2022.